Donovan Mitchell and the Cleveland Cavaliers are the first team to try out Atlanta under interim coach Joe Pruney. We'll see how long that lasts. Reports are surfacing. Hawks got a big time hire on the way, but first things first, Atlanta tries to get a win against the Cavaliers. Trey Young gets Atlanta off to a good start with the lob up top to Clint Capella. And then more addition from the ATL is DeJounte Murray finding his new teammate Sadiq Bey in the corner for three. Cavaliers, by the way, fresh off of a loss, trying to right their wrongs. Darius Garland inside for the deuce. And then how about Donovan Mitchell with the and one? And this is trolling to me. He's going to go over to Trey Young and say, you didn't foul me? I'm sure they're really good friends, but that's trolling, by the way. Don't ask me if I fouled you. Get out of my face. I just lost my head coach. Leave me alone. Young has got an and one of his own. Atlanta's up by 12. And then line it up and knock it down. It's Bogdanovich for three. DeJounte Murray maybe gets away with a little bit of a push off. It's not called. He knocks in the three with Darius on the ground, and he's going to point it at Garland and tell him that he's too little. Atlanta's up 23 points in a second more. DeJounte Murray, 25 points, nine rebounds, eight assists for DeJounte, and one emphatic jam to put Atlanta up 28 in the second quarter. DeJounte, I love when he gets out in transition, by the way. A sight to see. Atlanta was a sight to see for their Hawks fan base in this one. Third quarter, it's Ice Trey. Deep three. Game so nice, probably need to shoot from about the same spot twice. Young, putting Atlanta over 100 piece with more than six minutes to go in the third. And more defense leading the offense. I think a Congo got a hand on that one. On the other end, it's Trey Young. He let everybody in scoring with 34 points. Oh, man. Boosie. After his week-long beef with Atlanta legend T.I. pulls up to the game to root the Hawks on, they win 136-119. Well, I'm not surprised the Atlanta Hawks woke up for their first game post-All-Star break and also their first game without former head coach now, Nate McMillan, who I'll, I'll just want to say this really quickly. What Nate was able to do with Atlanta – in that 2021 run. I don't want that to get swept under the rug. They competed their butts off against Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Finals. And look, I know Giannis did injure his knee in that series, but Trey Young also got hurt in that series and wasn't 100% either. So I just want to put that out there. They were maybe, they could argue, they were one. Trey Young from stepping on, was it like the ref? One Trey Young injury away from making it to the NBA Finals. I do want to give Nate some credit. I was a fan of Nate McMillan, uh, but keep in mind, I don't play for him, right? So I don't know. I did hear some recent comments from John Collins, who, you know, recently said, hey, you know, um, Nate is a guy that maybe would be better suited for an older team. He's like, we're young guys. And I'm listening to some of those comments and, and what bothers me, and y'all know I don't use the race card often. One of the reasons why I don't use the race card often is because I want it to matter when I do use it. I want it to mean, I want you to know I really mean it. As a black man in America, I want to be honest with you. I, I do cringe a little bit watching Nate get the boot in Atlanta. And um, this is the second coach, right, that Trey, during the Trey Young regime, we've seen get the boot. Late Lloyd Pierce also got the boot. I do kind of cringe a little bit listening to some of the things that players, I think Trey Young's got a podcast in the upcoming days where he might discuss the Nate McMillan era as the Atlanta Hawks head coach. There's a lot of overlap with, with how Nate exited Atlanta, with how Mark Jackson exited the Golden State Warriors. They're not one-to-one -one parallels, but if you listen to some of the Warriors comments, you know, there was some of these comments of, uh, you know, you know, older, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Mark Jackson tried to implement a, a lot of religious things on, on the on the Warriors team. He was a, a preacher, if I'm not mistaken. You hear you hear some of the Atlanta Hawks say, you know, Nate was older. You hear some of that older lab. I, I, you can oftentimes associate older and, and, and using, like, religious undertone statements, right? The reason, you know, furthering this conversation, the Atlanta Hawks are closing in on making Quinn Snyder – 
the former Utah Jazz head coach, by the way, really good coach, by the way, as their new guy. I, I would be dumbfounded and shocked to the curve if that deal doesn't become official at some point this week. Quinn's going to be the new Atlanta Hawks head coach. Keep in mind, Kyle Corver's the assistant GM in Atlanta nowadays. He played for for Quinn, if I'm not mistaken. So there's, a, there's some overlap there. It's been clear as day the Hawks want Quinn to be their guy. One of the reasons why you fire Nate right now with two reasons. You're trying to salvage this year while you got it together before you start making some moves. You want to get Quinn in there to see what he likes, what he doesn't like. The second thing is you want to get Quinn, period. You don't want the season to end and allow other teams to have the opportunity to potentially give Quinn Snyder a better opportunity. You don't want some of these teams that got high expectations to lose in the playoffs and Quinn look around and say, do I want to go to Atlanta, Magic City, a lot of partying, strip clubs. Actually, maybe I do want to go there. No, 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 no. You don't want him to look at the Hawks versus a team. I don't know. We'll see what's available in the upcoming months. You don't want – I never know what Steve Kerr is going to do. That's an interesting one for me, how long he wants to coach. Um, you don't want Quinn to look around and see uh, Steph Curry versus Trey Young. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You want, It's California, Georgia. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. All right, so you, you lock him up now. So that was a good move by Atlanta. They're going to get Quinn Snyder as their new guy. I just want to say this, though. I think what's haunting the Atlanta Hawks is an effort thing. That's a really good Cleveland Cavalier team. I know they're fresh off of a back-to-back, but that is a really good Cleveland Cavalier team. And for Atlanta, they destroyed them. That, that, that Cavs team never had a chance against Atlanta. To me, what it speaks to is, is whatever Nate's messaging was to his squad, it was going on deaf ears. You know, guys like DeJounte Murray, there he's a, really at, at, at the peak, he's an energy player, right? You see the steals. He started the season off like this. The steals, the highlight dunks. A lot of DeJounte's game is just energy. Trey Young is a deadly shooter, can make any shot on the court. Oftentimes, it just feels like preparation with him, right? Like sometimes he's making shots. Oftentimes, he's two for 14, I believe a lot of the Atlanta Hawks, I believe a lot of what they're trying to do is not on the open market. I don't think they need to make a lot of trades. I know what I saw in this team a few years ago. They gave the Bucks all that they can handle, even with Giannis in the fold. I believe a, a NBA Finals team is within this Atlanta organization, depending on the teams that they get in the playoffs, is matchups and make fights. They just got to play harder consistency is the thing for them. So, yes, they're looking for a coach. I don't know if Quinn's this guy, but they're looking for a coach that relates to young people that can get through them through those winter months, November, December, January, February, like right now, and keep them afloat. They, they can win games in March, April. You know, the problem with them is they got to get there first. And, unfortunately, it looks like, Nate ran his course. I, I still think it was a year too early to fire Nate, but it looks like him and Trey's relationship was dwindling quickly. I just, to be honest with you, as an African-American, it just feels like the black coaches, when it starts going south, it, it decays a lot quicker than some of their uh, white counterpart coaches around the league. They're, they seemingly get that extra year. guy like Luke Walden even maybe was gifted with – more than enough time. Like, it just feels like um, the black coaches, when it starts to go left, it's let's get them out immediately versus I've seen some very awful coaches that, are, you know, are not black, deserve to be fired, but are given the benefit of the doubt. I just, man, Nate had a fantastic run. I don't want that Eastern Conference run for Atlanta to get swept under the rug, man. It was a phenomenal run, and unfortunately for Nate, it's over now. The Hawks are moving on from Nate, and more times than not, they're going to hire Quinn Snyder in the upcoming days as their new head coach.